Namaste. Once again, I am back with Social Studies Grade 8. Uh, today, in today's class, I am going to discuss about our Unit uh, 3, Lesson 1, Social Problems. Uh, in last class, we have discussed about the religious religions of Nepal, but today's class, we are going to discuss about the social problems, their causes, their solutions, why they uh, arise. All these things, all in detail, we are going to discuss in today's class. So, I'm Aruna Dikari. In today's class, all over, we talk about the, all the uh, aspects of social problems, their causes, their solutions, and way of mitigating how, we, as a students, you can help to solve the social problems. All these things we are going to discuss in detail today. So, without doing delay, we're going to start the Look at the slide, please. Okay. Now, social problems. Directly, we are going to discuss about the social problems. What is social problem actually? Social problems are the conditions or situations which obstruct overall development of a society. That means, social problems are nothing. They are the obstacles or hindrances in the development of a society. That means, it malfunctions the um, overall activities of a society. That means, social problems are the conditions or situations which obstruct overall development of a country. That means, whichever a country, whichever a society is suffering from social problems, that means, the developmental activities of those country or that country, particular country is going to hamper by its uh, the due to the consequences of the social problems. Now, next slide. So, in detail, okay, in detail, in previous slide, I show you, okay, social problem, what are social problems? Social problems are the conditions or situation which hampers the development in society. In detail, I am going to do it. Social problems, various activities are performed in the society on the basis of established norms, values, traditions, beliefs and modernization. In the course of development, the society faces many hindrances and difficulties like superstition, malpractices and so on. Such hindrances are called social problem. Earlier, I gave you the definition, now I elaborated you in a very simple or, sim simple or very uh, easy manner. Various activities we perform in society on the basis of established norms, values and traditions and beliefs and modernization. That means, we have set values, norms, how to do social rules, everything we have. But in the course of development, course of doing this, di these things, we face many hindrances, many difficult obstacles in our society like superstition, malpractices, bad practices and so on. Such hindrances are called social problems. Got it? Now, when we talk about social problems in Nepal, in Nepalese society is full of social problems. Uncountable social problems we have. Some are regional, some are national. Okay? That means we have lots of social problems in Nepal. Look at the figure. What are the major social problems we found in Nepal? Dowry system, Gumtov system or Gumtov Pratha, Chaupadi system. Devki system, Juma, human trafficking, untouchability, bullying, gender discrimination, child labor, corruption, racial discrimination, superstition, conservative tradition, child marriage, women violence or gender violence, you can say. So, these are the problems. Some of the problems are regional. Some of the problems like Chaupadi system, you find in the mainly in the uh, earlier, now state number, sorry, Karnali province, state 6 pro Karnali province and Sudhir Pachim province, you find Chao system, but you won't find in Chao system in other part of the country. Devuki system, Juma system, they are some regional, some are na nationally found, like untouchability, still practice all, all over the country, though it is banned by the law, but it is also in the practice, it is also prevalent in the society. The bullying, okay, child labor, child labor you find all over the country. It is not a regional, it is a national problem, social problem. 
So, this kind of problem are racial discrimination. There are discrim racial discrimination also, there are black and white, okay, uh, having pointed nose or blunt nose, having a big eyes or chinky eyes. Okay, such kind of discrimination is called racial discrimination. Racial discrimination also prevails in Nepal. That means regional discrimination is also there. The people of one particular region discriminate other on the basis of one's appearance, color, okay, on race. Conservative tradition, that means orthodox feeling we have, orthodox belief, very old beliefs which is not suitable uh, in present circumstances. So, such kind of traditions or, or sorry, conservative traditions also added fuel for the backwardness of our society because of that, because social problems invite social evils. One problem invites many evils like poverty. Poverty is social problem in our country. That means 21.6 percent of our population are living below the below poverty line. That means when they are in extreme poverty, when they are hungry, they commit various mistakes or commit crime just to fill their st empty stomach. Such uh, act or such activities just to fulfill their um, hungry stomach, they perform, uh, they commit various anti-social elements. Such anti-social elements are called social evils. That means, social problems are the cause of social evils. That is why social problems need to be solved very fast. Whenever they are seen in the society as they seen, we have to solve it as fast as possible. Otherwise, it creates more problem. That means, problem plus problem is equal to more problem devil it. Now, let us move to the next uh, slide. Now, first of all, we are going to discuss about the dowry system or daijo system. In Nepali, it is called daijo pratha. The custom of demanding for property by the groom side, which is supposed to be fulfilled by the bride side is known as dowry custom. In very simple language, when uh, during the marriage, the boy side, Okay, groom, groom means boy side, behula side. Okay, groom side demands some property, maybe land, car, vehicle, gold, ornaments, anything they demand from the girl's family, and the girl's family need to fulfill those demands. Such system, such custom is called dowry custom, though it is very bad because dowry custom has turned. Um, social uni, uh, uh, union, marriage is a social union, it has turned into financial union. That means, the custom of demanding the pro, uh, demanding for property by the groom's side, which is supposed to be fulfilled by the bride side is known as dowry custom. That means, whenever there is a marriage, the marriage has, marriage is okay, decide on the basis of how much the groom, the boy is uh, getting, receiving from the girl side. That means, it is like um, women are just um, measure with measure or just compare with the how much dowry he, her father is giving. Got it? Look at the next slide. Now, consequences of dowry custom. You might have heard, okay, very often news, is, uh, news are coming in our national television, newspaper, FM radios, okay, about the dowry system and dowry uh, related cases, okay, suicide, killing, and that means torture. So, what are the consequences of dowry custom? Gender discrimination. First of all, when there is a dowry system, dowry system, uh, system is in the, the highest climax, okay, highest point, that time what happened? Everybody avoids girl child. That means everybody avoid the girl child. They don't want to have girl child because when she grew up at the time of her marriage, the parents have to pay dowry. So, girl, uh, gender discrimination arises. Why? Because every parents, every couple want to avoid girl child. Now, bankruptcy of bride's family, bankruptcy kangal. Now, that means. Uh, to get of her ma daughter married, okay, they have to take uh, loan from bank or any other financial institutions which they cannot pay back, and the bank or the institution take them take their uh, properties back. So they become bankrupt. Mental, physical, mental, physical, and psychological torture to women. 
when the groom side is not satisfied with the dowry or the money or the property received from the girl side, if the uh, bridegroom is not uh, satisfied with the money or the property received from his in-laws, that time he is to give mental, physical and psychological torture to the woman. That torture woman have to go through in her life. So it is very bad. When we do marriage, marriage is a social union. Social union it is done for the uh, good of both boy and the girl. It unites families. It makes relationship. But dowry breaks all those set norms and the essence of marriage as well. Marriage has become a financial deal rather than social union of families, as I told you. Consequences, marriage has just become how to get money, how, how much the particular person is giving along with give, um, money, amount of money or the property is giving along with her, his daughter. Okay? The person have to decide. That means what? Marriage has become a financial dealing rather than social union. Now, next slide. Now, next problem is brain drain or intellectual migration. Brain drain or intellectual migration are same. That means what is brain drain? The meaning, look at the meaning. The departure, departure leaving, okay, going through, going from one place to another, another place is called departure. The departure of highly qualified people, scientists, engineers, doctors, lawyers, for other countries where they have better opportunities and usually better pay is called brain drain. For example, many developing countries suffer uh, suffering from a brain drain where talented people move to move to places like Europe, Australia, USA, that means mostly the developed countries. Why they are moving? Why, why can't they stay here and they work for the country? Why they are moving? There are lots of uh, reasons why they are moving, why they are going, uh, leaving the country, their motherland, the, their native land they are living and they are going, they are uh, living for the new destination where they have to start their life in a very new way. But they are uh, compelled, there are some compulsions are there, we will discuss in the later, uh, in today's class. So, look at the slide, brain drain. The trend of migration of brilliant mind, the trend of migration of brilliant mind and skilled human resource to develop countries is brain drain. How can we define brain drain? The trend of migration of brilliant mind and skilled human resource to developed countries is called brain drain. That means those person who is having brilliant mind they can uh, they can do anything good in any uh, any field of studies they go they migrate to other countries when they migrate uh, once they complete their work the government of that particular country retain them they never come back to our country that means in a case suppose a person uh, manoj manoj study uh, manoj has gone to study okay australia he studied there okay suppose rocket science in rocket science, he did very exemplary good and the government of Australia retained him there, giving him more opportunities, more uh, facilities and he, he never come back to Nepal. That is a loss for Nepal. That means that is a loss for the, any developing countries because Manoj is very fond of the facilities and all the required things he is getting there. He can fulfill his all requirements living in Australia rather than living in Nepal. So he stay back there, he never come back, comes back to Nepal and that is the loss to Nepal. Now consequences of brain drain. What are the negative if impact of brain drain on developing countries like Nepal? First of all is scarcity of skilled human resource. That means when intelligent or intellectual or skilled human resource migrates to other countries, the country like Nepal is like uh, in at present facing the scarcity of skilled human resource. Suppose all the doctors who pass out MBBS from here or MD after doing master's degree or for doing master's degree, they are going foreign country and they ne never come back. 
that means we produce we are producing doctors but they are migrating after completing his, his degree his, their degrees and here is the lack of doctors in our country that means scarcity of skill human resource slow in developmental activities when engineers uh, doctors all the uh, skill human resource went oh sorry sorry live um, for developed countries then uh, their home country lags behind in development slow sluggish development becomes sluggish next is dependent on other countries when such <coughs> innovative uh, creative skilled learned person live for developed countries then the uh, least developed or developing countries have to depend on other countries to fulfill their basic um, needs like we have to depend on import imported goods since most of our skilled human resource has already migrated to for uh, developed foreign countries where they are living uh, uh, with their families since some of some of the facilities are exemplary good in those countries in comparison with Nepal. Next is waste of natural resources. We have vast natural resources. That resources due to lack of uh, skilled human resource that are, they are being wasted. Lack of innovation and technology when skill learn brilliant minds okay, migrate to other countries then obviously we are we have to lag in innovation and technology. Now, as I told, uh, discuss about the two um, social problems. Okay, one is dowry custom, another is brain drain. Now, causes of dowry custom. The following are the main causes of uh, of this custom: lack of women empowerment. That means women have no empowerment. Empowerment what? Empowerment means the involvement of women in socio-economic and political font like men is called women empowerment. Number two is lack of women education. Women, women education according to census 2068 BS in higher education uh, the SS of male are uh, seven around 75 percent female is 57 percent only. Patriarchal stru uh, social structure that means the head of the family in our uh, society is father that means we have purush uh, pradhan this we can say that means male are the uh, male is the head of the family that is called patriarchal system of family next is poor implementation of law law implementation have to be done strictly then only such evils or social problems can be curved otherwise poor implementation of law does not help to curb the bad things in the country Next slide, solution of dowry custom. How, how can we solve this dowry system? How can we end this dowry system? What are the main way to solve? Women empowerment. Since women have the essence over socio-economic and political power of the country, then they do not have to pay dowry to get them married. Education to women. When women get educated, they will also have a job. They will also have access in assess and explore the world so they become able when they become able no one need to pay dowry in this way women education slowly solve the slowly but surely solve the dowry custom gender discrimination that means you have to in the gender discrimination there should not be discrimination between male and female daughter and son strict implementation of law law must be implemented strictly so that everybody get scared of um, uh, um, uh, uh, scared of taking dowry and giving dowry so these things is important when law are strictly implemented then everybody is get scared of go against the law when they scared of the law that means they could, they cannot commit mistake when they this trend will stop then slowly everybody everybody comes to know that yes when dowry is taken or given the law will punish everyone okay, irrespective of caste creed religion any background that time what happens slowly this kind of evils or trend will become slowly lesser and one day will come 
all this evil will finished. Next slide. Now, causes of brain drain. Now, as, as we already talk, talk about the brain drain. Okay. Now, what causes to brain drain? What causes a brilliant mind? or what causes an skilled human resource to migrate to developed countries leaving all the things behind in his motherland, his or her motherland. The following are the main causes of the brain drain in Nepal. There are two factors, pull factor and push factor. Pull factor, what, the, what things pull to pull someone to developed countries? What are the things pulling factors? Better lifestyle, good earning, peace and security professional growth etc. That means, when, why somebody, okay, so everybody now in, uh, in youngsters after completing 12, okay, I want to go to Australia, I want to go to UK, I want to go to USA, that strain is very high in Nepal. Why? Because of this pulling, pulling factor, pull factors. Better lifestyle, obviously, the developed countries have better lifestyle, good earning, international standard earning, peace and security, they have no problem in peace and security. Professional growth, once you complete your studies, you will get the job which fitted your education. Such things are the pulling factors, they are pulling towards, okay, pulling towards okay, them from the developing or underdeveloped countries. Next is push factor. Some of the factors which are pushing uh, our youngsters, our brain, uh, our intellectual brain or skilled human resource from our country. Look at the slide. Some factors are pushing, okay, go, 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 they are pushing from our country. Which factors? Unemployment. Once they complete their education, they won't get a suitable job which suited their education. Low income, though they get income level is very low. Lack of peace and security, there is lack of peace and security in Nepal. Poor standard of living, living standards is very low. Whenever you go, okay, if it is sunny, it all dusty, when road is all dusty. When it is rainy, okay, it all potholes and water fill, okay, it's very dirty. So, such kind of, such things, poor standard of living also push the uh, youngsters or talented mind or skilled human resource from underdeveloped or developing countries to developed country. Now, Solution of brain drain. So, how can we solve this? How can we stop this migration? How can we stop this loss? Nepal is uh, every every year Nepal is suffering a huge loss due to this brain drain. So, how can we stop this? So, there's a um, look at the slide. Create creation of better employment opportunities. Here we have to create better employment opportunities within the country within Nepal we have to create employment which suited their, best suited their education. Maintain better peace and order situation. Peace and order situation may have to be maintained very properly, so that everybody feel secure and peace. Opportunities for professional growth. Suppose a doctor wants to perform, the doctor wants to uh, uh, grow, uh, carry his career in his profession in very well manner. Yes, all the such facilities, that means such facilities means higher education, everything have to be here. Opportunities have to be provided for one to grow, for the growth of, for his or her profession. Development of better infrastructure. Infrastructures like road, transport, communication, education, health, drinking water, everything such infrastructure need to be improved a lot. Then only people stop migrating to other countries. With this, this is the end of today's class. I hope you enjoyed the class. We will meet again on next week taking new lesson, new topic and new way of learning.